tell you. Hi, what's up everyone? It's me, Andrew, or also known as Atilio the Hun, and today we are going to be doing a early thoughts on the newest Pokemon in Pokemon Unite. This being Blastoise. Now, Blastoise is the newest defender to come to the Pokemon Unite roster, though he has been played as and seen before back in the beta on mobile uh, many, many months ago at the beginning of the year. And Blastoise, after playing him a little bit on release now, is pretty fun. But this is a master player's thoughts on Blastoise. So let's go ahead and learn a little bit more about the Pokemon Blastoise. So, right here, I do have PokemonUnite.gg, which is an amazing website if you want to go learn more about the Pokemon you're trying to play, as well as learning some builds and stuff about uh, whichever Pokemon you're learning about. But today, we are going to be looking at Blastoise. Of course, it goes from Squirtle to Wartortle to Blastoise. And now, Blastoise is a ranged defender, and according to Pokemon Unite, he is intermediate to use. His offense is a 2.0, his endurance is a 3.5, mobility 2.0, scoring 2.0, and support 3.0. So Blastoise is made to be a tank. That is what Pokemon Unite, the developers, and all those have kind of created the character to be. But, however, from my experience as me and a couple of my friends, we went to the practice tool as well as some games together. We kind of experimented and tested Blastoise with different types of builds, whether we could build him, you know, damage, or if we should just go more of the tanky support role. And first, we're going to go over his moves and tell you a little bit about what we think. So first of all, his basic attack is special attack based. Um, so he is a special attack Pokemon. Every third attack does continuous damage and slows the opposing Pokemon. Now, I really do like uh, Blastoise basic attack. It does actually kind of have a little bit of meaty damage to it that I really, really enjoy. And his passive is Torrent. His increase It increases attack and special attack below 50 HP. So this kind of gives Blastoise the uh, fight or flight kind of uh, ability where if he gets below... 50 HP, then uh, his attack and special attack increases. So not just special attack, but his attack also increases. So his basic attack, uh, even though it says special attack, he does he can do you know normal attack damage. That is his third basic attack that does the special attack uh, damage. Now moving on, we are going to go to his level one or three uh, attacks, which are water guns. So water gun shoots water that displaces and slows opponents. So Blastoise is really good at displacement and creating some CC, and I'll also get into that a little bit later with the builds that me and my friends have kind of come up with. Uh, so Water Gun, I always take this one first for the most part, it's really good, but then you immediately get Skull Bash, it stuns the opponents with a fierce headbutt. Now this is really good, I've and it does a pretty decent amount of damage as well, it's pretty good for stealing. Uh, camps early on from the enemy team, and this is a attack that I quite enjoyed using along with Water Gun, because like I said, he's actually pretty good at stealing camps early from opponents, which I think is really important as a support or defender, or even a little bit of a harasser. Now we get to level 5, and you get to choose between Hydro Pump and Water Spout. So here's, I'm going to go ahead and talk about, here's the full, first cool thing about Blastoise. Uh, depending on how the rest of your team builds will depend on, you know, what kind of moves, because I actually think both these moves can be viable depending on what you're trying to build with Blastoise. And that, I think, is the first cool thing about Blastoise, because a lot of Pokemon, you kind of just get the notion that uh, they have only one type of way to build. Like, mo a lot of Pokemon only have, like, one good combination of moves, but I think Blastoise actually has multiple good combinations to move in. It gives us different play styles, and, you know, it's fun to do. So... Let's just say, for example, you're going to go the standard route, which is Disruption and Support and Tanky, which is what Blastoise was kind of built for. I think for this, you should choose Hydro Pump at level 5. It shoots a large jet of water that displaces opponents, which is really good for separating Pokemon from the fight, as well as can be good for sniping uh, some Dreadnoughts and, or some Rotoms or the objectives as well. It's very good for those team fights. We'll get back into Water Spout later when we... Uh, go through that uh, that type of playstyle. So, with that, at level 7, for this playstyle of the defensive supportive, you would choose Surf, 
which summons a riot of wave of water that displaces and stuns opponents in its path. Another displacement move that's really good for getting into the fight. Plus, you also get to uh, one on upgrade when you get to the higher levels you gain a shield upon impact as well as uh you kind of uh get to move like after the because the wave kind of moves twice and on that second one you kind of get to hold the directional button on your uh controller and it'll put you in that direction which i think is really cool and really good if you want to like kind of do a surf but not go all in you just move it away uh, but if you're trying to maybe get into maybe use your unite move or cause a little bit more damage uh, You kind of just go in not even damage, but just disruption and his ult is Hydro Typhoon now this spins a blast of water in all directions shielding you and pushing all opponents Outward this is such a good unite move because what it doesn't tell you also is it does so much damage Even if you build tank uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and tell you the items that I would take on Blastoise as a tank or support now these items would be buddy barrier muscle band and focus band now those three items i think are super super key you get the muscle band for the extra damage you want to do as blasters because i'm telling you his hydro typhoon unite move does so much damage even building pretty much full tank buddy barrier is pretty standard gives you that bear and uh the extra health as well as the focus band focus band with the region is always amazing to have on any pokemon i almost take focus band in every single build that i do for the most part especially because i'm mainly a all-around player but i do like to sometimes go about and switch it up a little bit by trying to understand each role of course but i do typically play all arounders but man blastoise i'm having so much fun with as a defender okay so now we're going to go ahead and talk about his other moves and other play style that i think blastoise can have depending on how your team builds and depending also what the other team has so with before i finish but with the Defender support uh, displacement disruptor playstyle is good for anything. You can have any team comp, and even if you got another tank or disruptor, it's pretty good to have. Uh, I have had no problems playing this way as Blast Choice in any of my games. It's been pretty easy, it's been pretty fun, and I think it's just an all around good one. So, the more situational, but I think is more fun because you're taking a defender and doing tons of damage, which is what I like to do with my uh, Snorlax builds. I like to go. Um, kind of a defender but also does a lot of damage and this one is really fun but it's super situational because uh, I'll, I'll tell you why in a moment so this one is if you take the other moves so at level 5 you take water spells which creates a spout of water that slows opponents and on upgrade it does increase damage now the thing with this move is that um, it's not particularly the best by itself but I'm going to show you why it's really really good especially if you go this different uh, route. So when you get to level 7, you're going to be taking rapid spin instead, which retreats into your sh uh, into your shell, changing your attacks, which uh, does a lot of good uh, uh, you know damage and movement speed. Uh, this also, on upgrade, gives you extra defense, which is really good. So rapid spin with water spout does a projection of flurries of damage like a lot faster than if you were just pressing your regular attack button when you're in rapid shell form now this does like and you have to hold the water spout button you don't just press it you hold it so the kind of good combo which i'll show you in a recording that i have later is water spout rapids in because what it doesn't tell you is it actually resets your cooldown so what you do is rapid spin uh after you do a water spout into rapid spin into another water spout you just hold the button and after your water spout finishes its duration you rapidly press your attack button to deal as much damage as possible and i'll tell you this does so much damage especially if you have uh the items that i tell you at the end that um it did up to over 10,000 damage to a single pokemon if you're able to get off all those hits and that's the thing if you're able to get off all those hits uh, and this is where having other Pokemon that can create CC, like either a Snorlax or a Slowbro, a second defender on the team is really the way you want to go if you want to do this Blastoise, because uh, it, it, it'll do obscene amount of damage. And the items you take on him is Scope Lens, Muscle Band, and I like to actually take a Float Stone on him. And this is if you're doing the Rap Spin Water Spout combination, because I, like I said, it does a ton of good damage 
like I said, I got up to 10,000 with it. And you're building attack instead of special attack because um, with the rapid spin, you're mostly doing your uh, regular attacks, even though you are doing the um, water spout damage. But it, it, it does a lot of good damage. Like I said, we've tested this against the practice dummy, and it does over 10,000 damage. I think I capped out around 11,000, um, depending how you can land the attacks in it. It does really, really good damage. And of course, Hydro Cannon or Hydro Typhoon always does good damage regardless of how you're building. And you could switch out the Float Stone, I think, for uh, maybe a Buddy Barrier or even Focus Band, of course. Or even if you want to do a special attack item in there as well. But the Scope Lands and Muscle Band really does a lot of good damage for Blastoise. Um, but it is very situational based on if you've got good uh, supporting Pokemon around you that can cause that CC. That way you can just do your full amount of damage on them. Before we go into the video segment where I kind of talk through a video of us playing the game and playing the Blastoise, I am going to tell you kind of my opinions on the, my, and my early thoughts on Blastoise after going through the Pokemon. Ultimately, I had the most fun playing the Rapid Spin Water Spout variant, but of course the most viable one when it comes to higher play or in any situation is the disrupting defensive support play the way you're kind of supposed to play Blastoise it's only good if you've got other Pokemon that can provide you with reliable CC maybe one or two different mons uh, and also ultimately Pokemon like Cinderace and Greninja are still gonna out damage it I mean that's what they were made for uh, the safe option like I said is always to play the tanky disrupt variant as it's more reliable regardless of who you play as or who you're playing with now we're gonna go ahead and transition to the reaction and recording section and me kind of just going over what I think and about this gameplay that I've done I am playing with my friends Wasabi and Jay side uh, both a part of 16-bit esports as well, and also just uh, good friends that I've had for a while now. So I am going to go ahead and get into the video, and we are going to discuss the kind of gameplay that we are doing. All right. So we are just finishing up loading and waiting for this Absol to just finish up. All right, so now we are going to go ahead and get into the game, and we are at the 10 minutes. I am going to kind of just be focusing on my gameplay early on as well as uh how we're gonna do things so our first mistake in this video is we did go ahead and have the slow bro go bot i think it would have worked out a lot better we do i pretty sure we do end up winning this game but i think it would have been better if we switched to the um had the slow bro up top with me so pikachu the pikachu does have some good cc with its electro web but i do think ultimately in the end it would have been better but as you can see like we're doing some pretty good clearing early on we got the corp fish at the very beginning with it and now snorlax is going to try and steal here but alas uh Actually, I do think he gets it. Yeah, he is able to get it, but he does, he pays for it by losing his life. I do get the kill with the Skull Bash, and right now I am doing the Scope Lens uh, Float Stone Muscle Band build at the moment. This is what I have on him. Froakie is trying to steal some stuff, and uh, he does get it, but the Electro Web does hit, and we are able to chase a little bit, but he does get the flash, and I, I do also flash to try to get the kill, and I believe Pikachu does get the kill. J-Side, nice kill you got there, my dude, but... So far, the early game is pretty good. The damage output on my normal attacks is pretty solid, and I'm able to score this 22 early. And that was actually the first score, and I do take the water spout, you know, getting some decent damage and area effect and slows, but it's not going to come into full effect until I do get the rapid spin. And that was, uh, got all the farm there for... Because uh, I forgot that was, I also thought that was the enemy Froki at first, but it was uh, our Froki. I am already War Turtle at this level 5, scoring another 10 for our team. So we are reaching the 8 minute mark, and we're going to start to see, uh, just making sure we get a little bit more farm up. We still have another minute until Dreadnought and Rotom, and the Snorlax is coming in, and we are able to get another kill. Good kill coming out from J-Side on to the Pikachu. Or, excuse me, for the Pikachu. Now, uh, we are just going to continue to farm up. It is going to be crucial for me to get Blastoise before the first Dreadnought fight. That way I have the uh, Rapid Spin Water Spout uh, kind of variant where I am going to be able to fully come online. So I am just going to farm up for these next couple minutes and see where it can get me uh, once I can get the... 
uh, the big thing. So gonna score this 8-2 break the base up top and I am able to get rapid spin off that. And as you can see here, I did the waterfowl into rapid spin. Kind of 2v1-ing here, like it looks like I am almost able to take them out, but the Cinderace does come, and this will probably be a unfortunate death for me as the Cinderace did come up and help out its teammates. But as you can see, I was able to kind of uh, 2v1. Now, because they weren't CC'd, I wasn't able to do the full amount of damage I was hoping for, and that was actually some kind of mechanical missteps from my part as well. Uh, this is the moment I probably should have went for the Dreadnought. I've kind of still got my solo queue mindset of um, going after the Rotom while the, my other four team members are going up top. Typically, you want to go with your teammates, but because I don't have the CC, I'm not able to really get the kind of damage I want from the Cinderace. I've also did a misstep here where I should have started attacking the Rotom instead, but however, I did not. Luckily, the Absol does come up with me to help take this out, and I'm kind of just doing the Rapid Spin combo to take out the Rotom as fast as I can. I do have some mis uh, mechanical misplays here because this is like my third or fourth time playing Blast Choice, and JSI does come up, and we are able to finish off the Rotom. And I am pretty low, and I should have backed here, but I was overestimating how much support I would have gotten from Jay's side. Uh, that's on me, and I and the Greninja also gets a double kill, because once again, Greninja is still going to out-damage you, regardless of uh, you being a full attack damage war turtle. So now I am going to be heading boss side. I finally, we do steal the Dreadnought, thanks to Wasabi with his slow bro, and I am able to get Blast Choice off that, and I start up my combo and as you can see i am doing the damage in the backside. i still have not yet ulted and we do get the kills onto the war turtle the slow poke or excuse me the snorlax and the crustal as well as the cinderace we wipe four of their teammates in that fight and we are able to get the dreadnought and uh, unfortunately i'm not able to charge up yet but i am able to i mean i wasn't able to score off that but it is the greninja just trying to do what he can but he does get away or doesn't get away and i try to ult but it doesn't matter because he did uh, disappear away and i'm still trying to kind of go in there and do some stuff the water spout into the rapid spin into another water spout but it doesn't really do much for there we do secure the dreadnought like i said earlier which was really good for us and we are now getting into the halfway mark of the game we got five minutes left we are in the lead and right now I'm not really showing the full versatility of this attack damage uh, blast choice. I am doing kind of some uh, bad plays here and there, but I am showing that I am able to do damage on the Greninja and even take him out, but I am pretty sure because that blast choice and blast, see, that's a full tank blast choice, by the way, going the tank blast choice pattern, and he still did so much damage to me. Like, it's pretty insane how much damage even as a tank blast choice can do with his Unite move. Um, but we are going back into it now after that unfortunate death. We are reaching four minutes. The Rotom is up now, and we are looking to potentially contest that. Wasabi is here, and we are thinking, okay, let's try and finish off this score bunny, and he does get C, and he does get the good CC and damage to try and kill him, but it is just not enough to take him down, but we do kind of make them run away. I'm trying to score the 21, but the Greninja is behind us, and Wasabi does good, good, the good telekinesis, and I go into the combo. He's already half damaged with the rapid spin, and we do get the kill with the slow burn finishing him off. As you can see, it does so much damage if you have someone who is CCing, because you can just get that up to 10,000 damage. That is at max level 15 with the 10,000, but you are still able to get a good amount. And as you can see here with the CC, we are able to take down the Cinderace as well, and uh, I'm able to pick up the kill. Now I am returning to base because I am pretty low, and J side's taking down the Blastoise bot side, and uh, Wasabi is starting up the Rotom, but the Crustle is able to take the Dreadnought, so we do lose that second Dreadnought. But now, like I said, going into the Water Spout, into Rapid Spin, I'm able to trust my teammates to do some damage bot side, but the Greninja bot side is kind of get some stuff, and we are looking to see, but I am going to ult the Rotom just in case, as, as well as Wasabi with that good play to use our Unite moves to get the Rotom in to get the pressure going. Crustle is scoring behind us, but uh, we are able, I am doing that rapid spin. And like I said, even on Crustle, I'm about to get him halfway and he does have to unite move to kind of, uh, kind of get him back into this. Now we should have backed on this because uh, the Blastoise did have unite move. We do lose uh, my friend in the slow bro right there. And it looks like I might also lose my life, but the Blastoise is back off when I do water spout behind him. 
And now I'm just kind of trying to farm as we are reaching the two and a half minute mark. We got 30 seconds until the Zapdos. And the Zapdos fight is going to be super... Uh, I think it is a pretty even game, or we, we are technically ahead by a little bit. And this is where a lot of teammates uh, tend to falter, because you should be... If you're ahead, you shouldn't really go for the Zapdos at all. Um, I believe I do die here through Greninja. I bit off a little bit more than I could chew. I thought my Greninja friend would come up a little bit faster, as I saw him on the minimap. But, unfortunately, that wasn't the case. We do get the kill onto him, but they do destroy our base up top. And now I think it's a little bit more of an even game. Actually, we are struggling to keep up, so we have to make a potential play or Zapdos fight here. Our Greninja does try to score the 100, but unfortunately it does not play through. I do get my Unite move to help out with a future fight. And let's see what I can do down here to help uh, my Greninja against the Crustle. And now I do see the Crustle trying to score that 45, so I'm gonna go ahead and Unite move so he doesn't able to. It breaks him through his buddy shield and whatnot, and I'm able to attack him and potentially finish off the Crustle here. I am getting a good amount of damage onto the Crustle, but the Crustle is healing as well, able to get out of this, even though I am providing some good damage. We should go after the Zapdos at this point, as well as we do get the Zapdos because I am able to keep that crustal out of the fight and my teammates also providing good stuff. Pikachu is able to get the double kill while we go and uh, I'm gonna flash forward. Now I don't have the surf to kind of get ahead where I need to so Greninja is able to do a good amount of damage on me but I am able to score the 100 as well as the slow bro score the 100 or I, I didn't score 100 I scored a 98 it looks like but I will die to the Greninja because I was battling him under gate. Now for the rest of the game, I should be pretty much, uh, you know, out of this. Uh, at this point, I'm kind of just defending against this Crustle, who does score 14, but it's not that much. I'm going to go help and score against this, or try to stop this score, uh, Cinderace, who does manage to get 8, but it's not enough. And with that, I believe time's up, and we do end up winning the game. It was pretty close, but at the end of the day... Uh, we were able to take the victory with the, um, the fight. Now, like I said, that slow, uh, that Blastoise combination was able to work only because I did have some, uh, some CC through the Slowbro as well as the Pikachu with his Electro Web. Um, but however, we, th I think if I had the Slowbro with me at the beginning of the game, it would have been better earlier. Um... Ultimately, you need to treat Blastoise if you go this route as an attacker, and as such, you need to uh, support him with the correct uh, Pokemon. Now, with that said, I do think, ultimately, the best route to do is just take him supportive and tanky. It's good in any situation, but the most fun I have with Blastoise is with the Rapid Spin uh, and Water Spout with building full attack and crit. It's a lot of fun, and uh, ultimately, my early thoughts on Blastoise is he's pretty good. He's a pretty good uh, tanky support. I don't think he's the best, maybe, or maybe he even comes close with Snorlax. I still think Snorlax is either just as good or potentially slightly better. I do think Blastoise in the right hands, though, however, can be very good. If you are in the lower ranks, I do suggest that you take the tanky variant only. Only take the kind of stronger variant with the full damage if you're in the higher ranks or you're playing with a team to support you around it. Uh, you're going to need the mechanics to pull off the the full damage ones, so if you want to play a little bit more safer and still be super viable to your team, I would suggest doing the regular tanky uh, how he was meant to be played. Now, that's my early thoughts on Blastoise, and it could change as the meta forms as we see a little bit more time with him. Uh, remember, if you are going the damage route, make sure to take Scope Lens, Muscle Band, and Floatstone. Floatstone can switch out with some different items like maybe Body Barrier for the extra defense, or as well the must uh focus band excuse me for the health region of course and that is with rapid spin and water spout but if you are going the disruption support route which is with surf and hydro pump i do highly suggest buddy barrier muscle band and focus band those are my best uh the the best kind of stuff i've been going off of and uh thank you guys so much for joining me in my early thoughts on blast choice and i hope to see you guys again for the next video see you next time